So we're here to talk tonight. We're here to talk about three different projects that are in this Pilsen area. Um, we are following up on the status of these three cleanup projects. Uh, the first one is called the H. Kramer uh, cleanup. It's in the Pilsen neighborhood. The H. Kramer facility is right next to Benito Juarez High School, and were found. They were found to be responsible for contamination from their past operations and their smelting operations for contamination in the neighborhood. Uh, lead specifically. So years of sampling went into defining the extent of that contamination and tonight we're talking about how residents can make sure that their home, if they're concerned about lead contamination in their backyard, can enroll in the process of getting sampled and getting cleaned up if it's found to be contaminated above a certain threshold. In this case 400 part per million or milligrams per kilogram lead. Um, cleanup has already started around the immediate plant on a rail spur in an alley uh, that we found to be uh, posing a risk to kids going to and from Benito Juarez High School. Um, so that project is already underway, but now tonight we're going to talk about how residents in the area downwind of that facility where dust from their, uh, mission, their pollution control devices may have settled were also impacted. So that's the first project. Uh, my colleague Ramon Mendoza will present on that. Uh, another one of my colleagues, Mike Roberty, will be talking about another project that is a follow-up to the Lowenthal Metals cleanup, which you remember was an old, uh, op old smelting operation on 18th Street. Um, we found, as an ad adjunct to that project, a rail corridor that's now been con being converted by the city into a trail, a recreational trail. We found contamination there. So that site is being assessed. We have entered into an agreement with Burlington Northern Santa Fe, the railroad that owns that property, to sample it, assess it, and clean that up. So that's the second project. And we'll be explaining the status of that and where we're going with that. And then the third project is called the Harsh Chicago Area Soil Site. And this was part of the initial sampling effort for H. Kramer for OU1 and OU2. We're calling it Operational Unit 1, Operational Unit 2 where this was supposed to be a background upwind area not impacted by that facility. Well, lo and behold, in sampling 17 yards in that neighborhood, which is 16, uh, Damon, Western, and the Canal, there was high levels of lead found in those 17 residences as well. So we started looking at potential sources for the lead that may have deposited in those backyards from air control devices, and we found six historic facilities between Blue Island and the Canal, between Damon and Western, that existed back in the early to mid-1900s. So we accessed those properties, and currently none of those are still in business, but there's 10, 11 different property owners now that have set up on, their, on that land. Cook County Department of Corrections, the 26th and Cal facility, uh, Westside Tech, Broader YMCA, several different companies that are now on those footprints and over the past several months we've been sampling those properties to find slag or the industrial byproduct of the production of metals containing lead in the subsurface. Um, back in the old days canals used to come off of the Chicago Sanitary Shipping Canal and go northward towards Blue Island and towards Cermat to bring in barges of materials. Those canals were filled in with slag, which has the same lead in it that we believe is found, will be found in the dust in people's backyards. So again, we're going to look for a source, and we are going to try to tie that historic contamination to the lead in people's yards, and we'll be doing it in uh, the same type of approach that my colleague Ramon is taking in the Pilsen neighborhood downwind of H. Kramer to try to offer residents uh, cleanup or mitigation methods for elevated levels that may be in their yard. Now the bottom line on all these projects is try to try and identify and determine the extent of and then take actions to mitigate exposures of residents, particularly vulnerable populations, kids who are growing up, living in those neighborhoods that may be in contact with these soils and may be exposed to lead in the process of being in touch with those soils. And you're going to go into uh, different pro or different procedures that uh, residents can do to uh, uh, 
uh, to mitigate some of the contamination. What uh, what specific uh, uh, dangers do these lead dusts in the environment in the home sites uh, present? Well, in, in, in my opinion, and we've partnered with the Chicago Department, the City of Chicago, and Cook County, and we've been working with the health officials at ATSDR to determine really what is the risk. The risk is, is, is minimal. Most of these yards have grass. Most of these yards are paved over. Most of these yards have been filled in subsequent to when these industrial operations took place. So very, of these little, very little of these lead-contaminated soils are right on the surface. And the ones that are, in order to really be exposed to it, the kids need to be in the dirt, either eating it or kicking up the dirt and breathing it in order. There has to be a pathway for the kids to be exposed to these soils. And these days, most of the play lots, they have wood chips down that really isolates their, their contact with the soils. However, you can't be too conservative when it comes to this. So what we're offering our, to residents are, if you have your yard, there are exposed soils in that yard, that they can have us come and grab a surface sample. If we find lead levels above that threshold of 400, we will offer several different approaches. One could be bringing in wood chips and covering it up. Another could be the resident putting down gravel over it to eliminate that exposure pathway. And the city offers wood chips, they offer mulch for free to any resident that's looking for it. But the alternative is an actual cleanup where we would come in with by hand and with small machinery, we call mini excavators, and we'll remove 12 inches, 18 inches of soil and bring in new soil, replant the grass, reestablish whatever they had there before, vegetation wise, bushes or trees, to restore it. And that's a tricky process because you have electric lines in the ground, you have sprinklers in the ground, you have a lot of utilities that you need to be careful not to impact. So it's really a collaborative process with the resident to determine, to explain to them what we found and work with them to find the right solution for them to mitigate the exposure and their, you know, their the threat that the exposed contamination may pose to them and their family. And we had heard before that uh, the deeper one digs into the soil around the area, the uh, the heavier the contamination is because it, it has been time worn, right. and uh, uh, contamination will uh, uh, will uh, will uh, precipitate through the soil and that sort of thing. Uh, what would this impact on any future development of the area that would involve any sort of excavation? So first of all, the lead that's at depth and in the soil borings we're doing on these historic properties, I'm finding slag with lead in it at 10, 12, 15 feet below the surface. That poses no threat because no one is in contact with that soil. The precipitation or the, the threat you talked about, which basically leaching of that lead. First of all, lead is very immobile in the environment. It gloms onto soil particles. It tends not to move. Number two, the impact that it would have would be on groundwater, and then the threat, the exposure pathway would be people drinking that groundwater. No one in the city of Chicago is drinking groundwater. It's all city uh, through the through the Lake Michigan water, through the Jardine treatment plant. We have some of the best water here in the world, best water quality in the world. So there, that exposure is minimal. However, to get to your last point, Let's say I buy one of these pieces of property and I want to build a building or a parking lot or any sort of excavation. Your workers and the people around that work site would, could be at threat when you dig 5 feet, 8 feet, 10 feet down and you're uncovering these soils. So really for any type of construction to take place you need normally a phase 1 assessment which would find any records pertaining to lead or past historic activities at the site that may have generated contamination, and then a phase two assessment, which would involve sampling and borings into the soil and groundwater monitoring to determine the extent of that. Now, I'll tell you right now, many of the facilities uh, that we're sampling on have gone through this process to delineate it, and some of the areas the city has required that they actually excavate and dispose of those contaminated soils down to the depth and then take samples to show that it's clean before they pour their concrete, before they put in their foundation, before they drive their pilings. So you cannot, in this city, develop on top of highly contaminated properties and there's a due, there's a 
process by which you need to get clearance in order to do that. Well, thank you very much. I think we've got... Yeah. Okay. Is, is, are there any points you think that uh, you know we, we haven't touched on that uh, you think are important? That uh, I, you know, I see the most important aspect of this is this is really a collaborative project. The city, the state, the county, EPA, and the residents, and especially the community groups under the leadership of Pedro. Um, we need people's cooperation. We need people to work with us to resolve this issue in, in West Chicago and when we move into other neighborhoods as well. It's very much a collaborative effort and really the best way we're finding to resolve it is working together and finding the best solutions and implementing them. And, and thank you. Uh, could could you give welcome. me your name again? Yeah, my name is Paul Roosh and I work with US EPA Region 5 in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you very much.